Hey guys, we're at Roots now. Uh, Roots Old Mill Flea Market in Lancaster County. Yeah. And we're gonna go find some discount gaming stuff. And nerd crap. Last time I was here, I found a Lord of the Rings ring necklace for a dollar. That he never wears anymore. I wear it sometimes. I wear it to bed. Me too. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you later. not a lot of success today. It's really hot out. It's like 92 degrees outside, so people are just packing up. But again, um, if you get to a place in time while they're packing up, that's when you can get the best deal because no one's here, so they're just looking for a good sale. That's one less thing they need to pack. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to look around one more time, see if we can find a good find, uh, get a decent deal on something. One thing when you're looking for when you're trying to um, find retro gaming is that uh, you're looking for people who just want to clean out their garage and you're just helping them out by taking off their hands. Uh, a lot of the time you'll find people who don't know what they have and they'll just price it as high as they can to make the most profit. Uh, avoid that. You want to look for people who are just saying like, hey, like, you want something, you have money. Yeah. Like, or people who have games and have no idea how much they're worth. Right. So, uh, try to bargain, try to like work out a deal, make some relationships so that you can come back again and make some more business so they get to know who you are. So, when the prequel novel to the Spider-Man PS4 game came out, I was like, why is this a novel? Why is this a graphic novel? Why are we making comic books into books? I'm all about reading books. But, we come here to the flea market Here's another one. Just make it, well, I don't know, I don't understand. I'll still read it though. Sweaty. So we didn't find a lot of video game stuff, but uh, I just want to talk a little bit about bargaining. So I got this Deshaun Jackson uh, jersey. I think it's official, but I got it for five bucks. Now the thing is, he was selling it for 10. I asked for five. As long as you're polite and you're not rude or condescending to people, as long as you're just saying like, hey, how much are you selling it for? Ten. Look at it, be polite with them, small talk, say, would you be able to do it for five? Uh, more likely than not, though, at least meet you in the middle. But if you are going to bargain, be polite about it. Don't be condescending. So, yeah. but the Weagles. And I got the app for free. I just asked him how much it was, and he said I can have it. Yay! So. Yeah, just be polite, man. I mean, that point I just made... Exactly what I'm talking about. You gotta be polite. Just saying. So that was kind of a disappointment. Um, not much there. It was kind of dry today. But we're gonna go to another um, like thrift store type place that we used to go to and see what we can find. Maybe we'll find something there to show you guys. What are you talking about? We got the Sean Jackson jersey. The Sean Jackson. Okay, bye, bye I can speak. Bye-bye. So we didn't have much luck at a flea market because it's 90 degrees out. Nobody wants to sell anything there. So we're going into a thrift store. What this is called is Reuse It in New Holland, Pennsylvania. Uh, the other one was uh, Roots in somewhere Lancaster. Lancaster. Somewhere Lancaster. Um, so what's different about thrift store, you can maybe uh, bargain there, but... Not really. Not really. But, but still cheap. Yeah. And you might not always find old video games in thrift stores, but it's always worth a chance. Because you'll get them... Um, at a really decent, decent price. Yeah. So, let's check it out. So now we have all the games to check from. You can get, so it's not the greatest price, but you know, all the games. Now, careful with this. 
he has a little fire going to be installed. Three bucks. However. But you get pretty good prices on the special editions. It's very good. Oh, what is this? You got some original like Fox games and. Oh, you got a PS4. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Today's the next day. Uh, we didn't have much luck at the flea market, which is weird, and then we didn't really have a lot of luck in the thrift store. Like, there was a couple good games in there, but not like the best prices. Pretty decent. But our last stop today is a locally owned game store called Just Press Play. So you have three options for you besides Amazon or GameStop, which is a flea market, a thrift store, and find your locally owned game stores so you can get good value, make good relationships. They're not working from commission or where it feels like they're working from commission, GameStop does. But we'll take a look at it. So we're here at Just Press Play, and I'm um, here with my friend Brent. Brent? Brent. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I almost said Brent. But, um, but I got a lot. Yeah, right? Um, so we're here at uh, the, this is the Lancaster County um, area, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're at, uh, there's three branches of Just Press Play. There's four, actually. Uh, four. Three in Lancaster and one in New York. And this is the Lancaster County Shopping Center location, which is like our, this is like our, um, our main, uh, Hub. Yeah. Yeah, the main <laughs> hub. Yeah, this is our uh, flagship. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so what, what kind of things do you sell at Just First Play? Video games, collectibles, uh, the occasional uh, toys, uh, movies, Blu-rays. Um, some of our locations have music or graphic novels and comics. Uh, we're getting ready to bring out vinyl. Uh, Vinyls. Nice. So a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, almost like a bigger version of FY80. Yeah. Well, FYE is becoming a whole different thing now. They're, I know. They're just like a Funko Pop and T-shirt store. Yeah, right? It's no longer about the music no more. Yeah, yeah no, now, now they're sending everybody our way with, with music and DVDs and stuff. They're not even buying them anymore. So. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. So, you sell a little bit about everything. Uh, I, but video games are our main focus. Yeah, you'll see a lot of retro games here, uh, more, more than any other kind of store. But uh, Which brings me to, like, what, what's the advantage of shopping at a place like this versus at an online store like Amazon or uh, any, any other sort of uh, online chain? Well, when you're shopping online, um, for one thing, uh, Amazon's taking a cut, and there's shipping costs and other things, so all that's being added on to what you're paying as a customer, whereas, you know, here, we don't have to. We don't have to pay a cut to Amazon. We don't have to pay for shipping and for selling to you right here. So you're you're saving money because of that. Um, whereas, and also, like when you're buying online, you don't always know who the seller is. And even if it's on Amazon, it could. It's not necessarily Amazon itself who's supplying the product. Um, whereas here, we we test everything. We warranty everything. We clean everything. You know, you get to hold it in your hands before you buy it. Um, which which is a big like when when you're a collector that matters. Um, yeah. Being able to, to see it and gauge the condition for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. It's a store run by gamers, people who know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, rather than like someone who like uh, I was just telling on on one on one end in Roots, uh, you'll have people who don't know anything about video games. And they'll pick it up from their garage. 
and it's just, uh, I can't even think of like an unknown game, like, oh, 50 bucks, you don't know what I'm talking about, but at a place like this, um, at least you know you're coming to a place where they know what they're talking about. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the final question is like, what's our, what's your view on gaming? Like, is, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Oh my like, like, or any of your favorite gaming memories? I wouldn't be working here if I didn't think it was a good thing. Though. Yeah. No, I mean I've I've been gaming for about as long as I can remember, so I, I have a lot of good positive memories tied to it. Yeah. Um, uh, I've I've really gotten more into like the retro collecting since working here. Um, seeing all the stuff. Uh, brings back a lot of memories um, and getting a chance to try a lot of the things that I that I didn't have when I was a kid because you know it was uh, I couldn't afford it or it wasn't available and now I can like go back and kind of kind of experience some of those things that I missed out on. No, same here. I I just picked up a PS2 at, at a Roots flea market, so like I'm just getting all the things I didn't play before. Yeah. yeah. But um, and another another thing that I, I would say about Just Press Play is here you're gonna find yes the retro stuff, but also all the new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of places are either one or the other. Yeah. Um, not there's almost no other place like at least in the states around here that can it seem like they, they can sustain that. So they focus either on on the older retro games or or on the new stuff. And yeah. Don't even and have like a retro. couple of the other ones, but yeah. Like if you if you look around here, I mean, you see um, pretty much equal amount of everything. So uh, it, it's a very unique store. I, w I would say is probably one of the best stores to go to, and, and at least Lancaster County. But uh, if you're going to buy games, don't only look for GameStop or Amazon. Look for a locally owned or uh, a local branch uh, game store so that you can make relationships, you can find what you're looking for um, at really decent prices. But uh, all right, Brent, thanks for talking, and uh, it's been a games and groceries moment. <laughs>
with all the wires, two controllers, two games for $15. Like, you'll find gems like that if you're just persistent. You go once a week or every now and again. And, um, yeah, just look for your options and have some fun. Build relationships, make some friends uh, all through gaming. So, hope you learned a lot and we'll see you on the next podcast. Oh, it's recording? Yeah, that's what you just said. Oh. Uh, well, I just... So much of a pumpkin overlord, like overload, that like I just get transported to, like a pumpkin patch in Pennsylvania. <laughs> like a Doctor Who moment. If you're not gonna check your bank account, clap your hands. Call it 76. You recorded that again. No, I was just about to start recording that. I already recorded you earlier. <laughs> No. <laughs> You're just hilarious, man. Huh? West Virginia. Calamari. I, I don't know the song. I just know West Virginia. I noticed that, um, what, I think it was, yeah, it was E3, and we were watching The No, like their, their live show, and Ashley Hudson was trying to sing along. Yeah. And she only knew the words that everybody else only knew. Like, oh, yeah. Them. Contra Road to the plane. And then like when like you get to West Virginia you just don't know the rest. Yeah. And like you get to see her mouth the words West Virginia and then nothing else. That's funny. That's what I do. <laughs> Mason. Masonic. 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 Yeah. Uh oh the sign. Oh. oh my god. No turn on red, babe. No turning on red. Good thing we're not turning. Don't turn. Male person. Uh, one last thing before I go. Uh, big shout out to this flavor of monster. It's called White Dragon. Uh, I've drank monster pretty much my entire life, pretty much, but this one, it's my absolute favorite. It's uh, one of those tea ones, the uh, rehabs. Amazing. Go out and get a white dragon monster because, oh, flavor. Yum.